with you this morning. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful God. We thank you for a wedding season. You are a faithful God. You are a God who reveals himself. You are a God that speaks. He that made the mouth will he not speak. Father, this morning we humble ourselves in your presence and submit ourselves to the authority of your word. Have your way this morning. Speak prophetically to our lives. Speak to our lives. Encourage us. Edify us. Rebuke us. Correct us. Let your word come as it is. We thank you this morning for your vessel that you have anointed to declare your oracles this morning. We thank you for utterance that only God can give. In Jesus' name we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, our Father. Uh, we can kindly take our seats. This morning, I would like to greet uh, the saints at Mount Region in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! I also want to honor our elders and our deacons. I'm also an elder. It's not easy to sit and listen to another elder. It takes humility. It takes also the Spirit of God. Amen. Allow me also to just greet our parents in our midst our overseers, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Hallelujah! Um, I was not given a topic to preach, which means I'm going to share what the Lord has put on my heart, a message that has changed my life, and also that I've seen some people's lives getting changed. Amen. I'm going to take it very slow, and then I'll preach a uh, when I'm now completing the message. We are going to read, take our reading from the book of Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4. I shall read for the sake of time. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. And filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in another tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Hallelujah. Amen. From the book where we have read, when I grew up, I thought. Pentecost was the time when the Holy Spirit came. Amen. After the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are talking of the issue of the Holy Spirit, we hear in the Old Testament it was promised that it was going to come. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself, there's a time in the word of God, if you go back even in the book of John on chapter 14, when he was promised that as I shall go, they shall come a comforter. Amen. And then if you go again to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we hear the Lord Jesus Christ giving a promise to the apostles. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem. Do not depart. Hallelujah. Till you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I thought the Holy Spirit came on the times of Pentecost. So I thought Pentecost was the time when the Holy Spirit came. But if we go back to the Old Testament, we hear that time of Pentecost, it was a time where the children of Israel were celebrating the harvest. During the times of Pentecost, the word of God tells us that all the children of Israel who were above the age of 12, they were going to Jerusalem. They, that time, they were busy celebrating what the Lord had done for them. I believe that time, if there were radios, that is where the people of God were busy dancing. 
Those who drink, they were busy drinking that time. But where we have read now, we hear there were two groups of people. The other group were busy dancing and celebrating. But there was another group of people who were about 120. The Bible tells us they were in a place that was called Upper Room. Where other people were dancing, where other people were ululating, where other people were eating, where other people were drinking. There are other group of people who were busy. Hallelujah. The Bible says that these people, they separated themselves. The other people, they did not know the times that it was not a time of drinking and eating. It was only the third time of hearing records. It was not the time of celebrating. But it was a time of waiting upon the promise. And the Bible here is saying that all of them who were in the upper room, they received the promise of the Holy Spirit. We can see a separation. The other people were drinking and eating. But we don't hear their records further in the word of God. But this other group of people who were praying, hallelujah, who had sacrificed themselves, who had separated themselves, we hear that all of them, not even one missed the promise. We have been praying, people of God, the whole month of June. But I'm here to submit to you this morning that there is going to be a separation to those who say that I know my oven is full of food. I know my fridge is full of food. I know my bank account has got money. I can afford to buy food. But month of June, it is not a month of doing that. It is a month of separating myself and worship the God of Ezekiel. The Bible is saying, all of them, all of them, all of them who separate themselves, they received the promise. I'm saying to Mount region, there are people here who are going to receive the promise. There are people here, their lives is going to change. And the people are going to ask, what has happened? We want you to tell them that in the month of June, when others was eating and drinking, I was not eating. There is going to be a separation. Ladies and gentlemen, the title of my message this morning is called The Power of Sacrifice. Sacrifice has got a tendency of separating people. You might be sitting in the same house. You might be staying in the same house. But if you sacrifice to the God we worship, a sacrifice has got a tendency of giving distinction between two people. You might be in the same church, the same founder, the same overseer, the same pastor, the same coordinating elder, the same elders, but sacrifice, what it does, it separates people. Yes. We want to read the word of God again to the book of Genesis, chapter 4. We can start from verse 2. I'm going to read. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel also brought an offering, fed portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Where we have read, there are two brothers. 
Same mother, same father. They were all appearing before God. But there is a distinction between these two people. One, when he was doing something before God, the Bible says that God looked with favor upon Abel. Amen. The distinction was that someone was just doing things ordinarily before God. He just went in the field and then no sweat, nothing. He was just taking things. That was Cain. But when it comes to Abel now, we hear that he had to go in his, in his in, in way to his animals, hallelujah, to his flocks, and then he took the fat. The Bible here is saying that from heaven day, God looked with favor upon the sacrifice of Abel. This one for Cain, it was just an ordinary act. I'm saying this morning, the God that we worship, he hasn't changed. He has got a tendency of respecting and looking with favor upon those who sacrifice to him. I'm saying fail, sacrificing to God. It separates two people who are friends. Sacrifice before God. It is sacrifice. It, it separates two people who are brothers and sisters, who are brothers and brothers. It can make a difference between you and the people that you grow up with. You know, myself, I think overseer I've heard about my testimony. When I came from Zimbabwe, I'm one of the people that suffered so much here in South Africa. My brother who was here, that I follow in my family, he called me to come to South Africa. Unfortunately, they at the border, he changed his mind that I must go back to, to, to Zimbabwe. And unfortunately, I did not even have money to go back again to Zimbabwe. I was already at the border. In my mind, I was saying, if I cross the border, he was going to pay forward those, I don't know, those who in Kauteng, there's what is going to pay forward. Where someone, who, who you go with the transport and then someone where you're going is going to pay for you. And then he changed for me right at the border. He said, no, go back. And in my pocket, I left with only 20 rands. I did not know what to do. And then I took his number, I tore it apart, and then I threw it away. I said, the God of our father, Ezekiel, if before the foundation of the world, if he said that I was going to die here in South Africa, let it be so. But something came in my mind. I said, okay, I've been coming from a place called Morewa. Let me use my foot to just walk. I don't know where I'm going. That was my first time to be in South Africa. I took the 20 runs and then I went to Messina. From Messina, uh, just after Messina, I started walking on my foot. I walked on my foot to Limpopo. Hallelujah. Those who know Limpopo, that's where I walked over almost 200 kilometers with my own foot. When I walked there, I remember I arrived there around 11 in the morning. But it did not take me 30 minutes for me to get a job. As tired as I was, I started working as a, as a bricklayer assistant there in Limpopo. The guy that hired me promised that he was going to pay me after two weeks. I was working around from 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. In, at night. Straight from work, I would go and sleep in the forest. My food for day was giving me some pieces of bread and... Uh, a, a packet called Jolly Juice. That is how I survived for the two weeks. When two weeks came, this guy refused to pay me. I worked for free for those two weeks. Two other people, they took me and I started working there. When I worked and then I ran from Limpopo, I came to Johannesburg to a church there, a Methodist church where refugees were being kept. Their life was very difficult, brothers and sisters. We were pooping lice in the morning. And no, no, nowhere to wash your, 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 your body. The clothes that they came with from Limpopo, I had to live with those clothes for days and days. 
From Limpopo, I then went to Eastern Cape to work in farms where we're busy cutting lemons and oranges. There I was getting about 250 runs, uh, no, 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 150 runs a week. I want to tell you what a sacrifice can do. That is why I'm giving you my history. I believe there's someone who has no hope in life. Who is saying that I've been in this church for too long. But I don't see my life changing. But I want to tell you about this God of Ezekiel. That there are things that you can do. That can separate you from other elders. That can separate you from other deacons. That can separate you from other believers. Life was not easy at all. I came from Eastern Cape, here in Cape Town, where they do grapes somewhere in... Yeah, there. From there now, this brother of mine, that's when he called me. He never apologized. He said, I want you to come back to, jo to Pretoria. I took a truck. I went to Pretoria. Upon Arabia from Pretoria, he asked me, so this year, I heard you've been working. I said, yes. And then he said, where is your money? Happily, because now I was now staying, that was my first time to be in a house where there was lights in a flat. I, with all the open heart, took the money. I gave him everything that I had. Later, did I know that this guy was busy calculating. I think that I, he thought that I had a lot of money. I surrendered everything to him. And then within days, he took a bus. He went back home. Myself, I'm there in that flat. The owner of the house came and said, who are you? I said, I'm Kenny's brother. He said, what are you doing in my house? I said, I paid rent. I gave Kenny's demand for rent. He said, Kenny never gave me money. Go out of my house. I went back and he started staying in the streets again. The streets of Sunnyside, those who know Sunnyside Pretoria. I was staying there when things were not good. Being good. Hallelujah. The God of our Father is a good God. You know, I used to go in church and sit right at the back there. I'm here to tell elders as well. Do not choose people by the way they are dressed. Because tomorrow you don't know how God is going to bless them. You don't know what's going to happen in their lives. Because I remember when I used to come to church, elders, some of them were now my friends. They used to look down on me so much because I was a nobody in church. But they did not know what God had in store for me. I am saying it to be mindful of how you treat others. You won't know who is going to help you tomorrow. You know, he ran away from me and then I got a job as a waiter. I worked as a waiter for quite a long time. And then one day I said to my elders, I was not a deacon. I was not even an elder. I was nothing in the church. I said, when you are going to deeper life, I want to go with you. But there I'm not going to go inside because I'm not a leader. But all the donkey work that is needed a deeper life, I'm going to do because I'm seeking the grace of God. My life needs to change. I am tired of this thing called poverty. I've been suffering so much for too long. And I've been hearing so much about what this God can do. But I want to see now if I know the donkey work a deeper life. Is this God is going to remain quiet? You know, I went to deeper life. I was there cleaning things, doing secretarial work at deeper life. And then I heard there was another man called Elder Matangi who was preaching about working for God. Me, I was a waiter listening there. I said, what this man is doing, if God, if you bless me, I'm going to replace this man to be in his foot. I made that declaration when I was a waiter. They stayed from the deeper life. I went to my pastors. They, I, I, was, I, I grew up under the leadership of Pastor Bernard Chumanangwana. He was my elder when we were growing up. I went to his office. I said, Baba, you know how we grow up. I'm tired of this poverty. I've been saving money as a waiter for too long. But this money, I need to surrender it everything to God. I want to see if this God is going to remain quiet. I said, but what I want to sit on, I want to sit where there's going to be the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said, I want evangelists who are students there to send them to preach the gospel of Jesus. I took all the money that I had in my account and then I bought a set of instruments. 
And then we went to open an assemb some assemblies in, I think it's now called Jobek, something, something. They, when there were no church. Immediately after that crusade, it did not take me two months. I sacrificed everything that I had. I was left with 13 runs in my, in my bank account. Sunday, I could not go to church. That week, even to eat, it was not easy. I did not have money because I've given everything to God. But within two months, God did a miracle. I was a waiter where I was working. Then when I went to work, I thought things are going to change and they fired me as a waiter as well. I said, what's happening, God? I have given and sacrificed to you, but now I got fired. I did not know that is where my breakthrough was. Within two months, that sacrifice was busy speaking on my behalf to this God of Ezekiel. Where we were working, there were elders there. I don't want to mention my name. We, it's like half of the, of, the, of, the, of the restaurant, it was people from outer city region. When I said I was going to sacrifice, other people, they thought that this person is getting crazy. But within two months, there was a separation between my fellow elders in the restaurant that I was working. Within two months, there was a separation between the believers that I was worshipping with. I remember our overseer was overseer Mahok. He was used to see me wearing an apron in a restaurant. On a Sunday, I shocked him. I was driving almost a brand new car. I parked it in front of the church. He said, whose car is this one? I said, Baba, it is my car. Hallelujah. Where is it coming from? It is coming from a sacrifice that I have done before God. And God favored me. I said to overseer, Mark, Baba, you haven't seen anything. This is this, the, 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 the smallest of it. I'm now a landlord. I just bought a house for 1.2 million. Where I was staying, I was the only black person. Only black person. Two months ago, I was a waiter there. Things were not looking good. I'm talking to someone who said that I'm tired of my situation. But I'm saying that the way you have been doing things of God, you have been doing it too much ordinarily. You need to check your life and say that I don't want this life anymore. I want to try this God. Hallelujah. A sacrifice can bring favor upon you from God. We want to read from the book of Genesis chapter 8 on verse 20. I'm going to read. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of the clean animals and clean beds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and he said in his heart, never again we uncase the ground. Do you hear that? The sacrifice for Noah it was smelling good before God. And God started reversing things. And he started ushering new seasons. If you go to chapter 22, verse 22 said, As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, we will never cease. There it is coming from the sacrifice that Noah did. The Bible is saying that when God saw the sacrifice, it was smelling so good before him. I'm saying this morning to my brothers and sisters, if you sacrifice to God, it must smell good for you to, to God. A sacrifice can cause God to start looking at things and say that this must stop to this person. This must come to this person. This problem of not getting married must stop. Marriage must come in the name of Jesus. This thing of person going to church every time with taxes must stop. This person deserves the Mercedes Benz because God here we see him start declaring things saying seed time shall come and the harvest shall come. Winter shall come and also summer shall come. Which means there's a season that is ending and another season that is starting. A sacrifice can end things in your life. My God, my God. 
a sacrifice ended years of suffering in my life. I was a nobody, nothing, nothing. But because of a sacrifice, things turned around. Things changed. We are saying this morning, if a person decides to sacrifice to his God, there are things that can change in life. We have been doing things too much ordinarily in the house of God, in the name of Jesus. But we are saying that as elders, we want elders that are going to be aggressive, saying that we have been doing things in an ordinary way for too long, and our lives have been stagnant for too long. We don't see change in our lives, but we are deciding to sacrifice to this God when we are doing things of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let us do it with all our hearts. The Bible is saying that these things smell good before God. We want to read again from the book of 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 26. Second Kings chapter 3 verse 26. When the king of Moab saw that the battle had gone against him, he took with him 700 Swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom, but they failed. He tried to have a breakthrough, but he failed. Then he took his firstborn son. It was a bad sacrifice, but still a sacrifice, a sacrifice. Who was to succeed him as king and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall? The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. You know, when I read this scripture, it makes me so much angry because the people of darkness, they've mastered the art of sacrifice more than the people in the kingdom of God. You know, our, our mothers, the, our, our, our grandfathers, they, they know that if they sacrifice blood, if they say that you're going to die, for sure you're going to die. You know, satanists, they know that they are so powerful because they're always sacrificing bad things because they've copied this thing of sacrifice from us but we who are supposed to be implementing it, we don't do it. But here we are hearing that he tried to have a breakthrough and then he failed. The moment that he sacrificed, things turned around in his life. You know, in 2021, I was coming from, I was going to preach at the Easter conference. Unfortunately, I got COVID there. I got sick when I was in Zimbabwe and then I decided, I, I only knew that I, I had COVID when I was already on my way. But I don't know how God does his things. I went for tests. They came negative. Immediately, when I arrived in South Africa, I went to see the doctor because I could see that my health was deteriorating. When I went to see the doctor, the first one said, go back home. The second one, who I, I decided to go to the hospital. And then they said, it's COVID has spread all over your body. We need to admit you right now in the ICU. I went into the ICU. That time when people were dying, it was not easy in the ICU because you'd go there, you'd see people with scary faces. Someone that can say, this one is not going to survive this one. And they put me in the ICU. I was there for good two weeks. I think around day number seven, the nurse came to me in the morning and then he say, she said, we are about to take you from the ICU to isolate you. We need to put you under, what does God? That thing went by, you are no longer breathing on your own. Ventilator. I said, what are you saying? You want me to put, you want to put me on a ventilator? I said, yeah, because... You, 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 you are no longer having energy in your body to breathe on your own. So we want to put you under vent. I said, wait, 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 wait. Just wait a little bit. I called Evangelist Pasi. You were still in Cape Town that time. I said, Baba, we need to organize some crusades right now. I'm going to send money for the crusades. Hallelujah. I was, and I see you that time. I connected people from Tepe people from Pretoria. I bought tickets for them when I was in ICU. 
We added even instead of instruments for evangelist party. The crusades were organized when I was in the ICU. I told them that wait would put me in this particular thing that you want to put me. There I was spending my time just to worship God. I said, God, there are people that are going to repent because of the sacrifice that I have done. That time I was not able to walk even up to where the overseer is sitting there. Because every time I want to step there, my breathing will become so heavy. My life and death were so close like this. I could see that if I play here, I was going to die. I was not going to see my family again. But I remember that when I sacrificed to this God, a sacrifice does something for God. The doctors have failed. My medical health had failed me. But I say there's something that will never fail me. The God of our father Ezekiel. If I decide to sacrifice to him, my life is not going to perish in this hospital. The crusades were organized when I was in ICU. The first crusade started. I said, I don't want to hear anything. I just want you to tell me how many people are receiving Christ. Every money that they wanted, I was sending them. I was sending them there. The first day when the crusade started, they gave me the number. That number is the one that gave me breakthrough. Because I went to God and said, God, there are about 300 people that are saying to have received Jesus Christ. If I did not send money to that crusade, these people are not going to, re to, re to repent. Are you going to let me die here among the people that doesn't know you here in this hospital? You know, the next morning when my doctor came, he found me lying on my belly. And then he said, he was smiling to me, he said, yeah, 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 that is why. I said, what's happening, doc? He said, your COVID levels, they dropped from 70 to 50. You are now on a safer side. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the sacrifice that I have done to God. A sacrifice is so painful. A sacrifice is too costly. But once you do it, there are results that come. Within three days, I was discharged from the hospital. But this God is a faithful God. I said I was discharged within three days when the crusade started. But this is the miracle that happened now. When I was there, myself, I'm a consultant. I consult on behalf of the government. I'm a tenderpreneur. I had tenders that I've sent before. When I was in hospital, I received a call when I was about to be discharged. Stan, we have got an emergency. There's a tender that you wanted to do. We have had you in hospital, but we are still willing to wait for you when you are healed. For about 2.1 million. I became 2.1 million richer when I was in hospital. Wait, it's not enough. Whilst I was still in hospital, another department called me again. We can't go to tender. We want you to do something. But we are going to give you a salary about 120,000 rand a month again. Whilst I was in hospital. Whilst I was in hospital, another department called me again. We want you to do something for us. This one, this one I know that this is the God of Ezekiel. They wanted me to provide law services. Legal services. I'm not a lawyer myself. I said, now, the God of Ezekiel is now showing me that I have nothing to do with you. So what I just did, the tender was about 970,000. I just looked for a lawyer. I said, I want you to do this work. I'll give you 50% of this money. So I came out from the hospital almost 4 million richer. <laughs> Number one, I came from the hospital very sound and healthy. Number two, I came out from the hospital very rich. But where is it coming from? It's coming from sacrifice. There is power in sacrificing for God. There is power 
power in working for God. There's power in sacrificing for God. We have been applying for these works for too long. We have been accepting rejection letters for too long. We have been staying in that one room for too long. But we are saying, if you want your life to change, what needs to change is your attitude towards the things of God. We want to also read the word of God from the book of First Kings, chapter 3. Uh, I'll read from verse 3 to 4. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David. Except that he offered sacrifices and burnt incense of the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Here we are hearing of a man called Solomon. The Bible is saying that he offered a thousand paint offerings before God. But the miracle now is that that sacrifice it drew the attention of God in heaven. Because the Bible is saying that same night there was no prayer paint there. There was no laying of hands. There was no casting out. There was no fasting. But the Bible is saying that that same evening God have to respond to Solomon. He said, Solomon, I've seen your sacrifice. What is that you want? The same night. Same night. Same night. Why are you suffering for too long? Why are you having a negative balance in your account for too long? You have been too stingy with that thousand rand in your account. But it's not even changing your life. We are saying that we want you to be angry with their situations. And he says that enough is enough. I need my life to change. I'm hearing someone who said, Elder, I don't have money. You are talking of money sacrifice. I don't have that money to sacrifice. But sacrifice can come into many things. You can come here every Sunday or every week and sacrifice with your own power and energy to God. There are many things that you can sacrifice to God. You know, when I was growing up, I was telling our youth, our youth want things in a very easy way. I don't know youth this side. They want to come to elders' houses. When they come there, Elder, I don't have money for rent and they want us to feel so pity for them. I was so much angry at the deeper life there. We wanted them. They were nowhere to be found. But they want me to give them money for rent. An opportunity came to come and sacrifice to God. You know, when we were growing up, Baba, you know, we used to go to wash our overseer. Our overseer was staying 30 kilometers away from where our origin was. But we would walk on foot just to go to wash that car. We go back home again on foot. Now when people are seeing God blessing you, they think that is just things that are happening. But there's a sacrifice that had happened before. What you can decide to minister with your own hands in the house of God. And God will honor that sacrifice. The Bible is saying the same night, same night, same evening, same evening, 
same evening, same evening, God remembered that there's a man called Solomon. You know, all my testimonies, if I think about them, if someone tells me that God has done to him, that's to him, I will not believe it. But I like the God of our Father. Everything happens when there are witnesses. Another day, I, 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 I gave my car to one of the men of God to go to Zimbabwe. That was a utmost sacrifice. It was almost a brand new car. I took it from my guys for work. I said, the man of God wants to go to do the work of God in Zimbabwe. I'm taking this car. You, you hire. Let me give the man of God the car. Everyone was angry. Including my elders were very angry as well. Let me tell you, you know the time that I bought those instruments for that crusade, I was rebuked on pulpit by my elders. I was just a believer. Why do you buy instruments to, 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 for that? But if I could have listened to them, I would still be a waiter right now. So I'm saying, as you do the work of God, there are people that are going to come and t tell you very bad things. But if you listen to them, I tell you that right now, if you don't have cooking oil in your house, they are not going to help you. If you listen to them, if you don't have money for rent this month, and they are not going to help you. But if you beg to God, he has got a good heart. He will hear you. You know, that car, it had 9,000 kilometers. It was almost new. It went to Zim. I don't know what happened. I think it had an accident in the road or what. It came back. When it came back, when the man of God came back with the car, he was with another elder. And then the elder said, I don't know, you know, the, the way the Holy Spirit works, he works in wonders. The other man, the elder there, he said, hey, Baba, can you sell me this car? But myself, I could see that hey, repairing this car is going to cost me. And then I said, yes, you can buy it. You know, I'm saying it was almost a new car. It was in Nissan Navarra double cab. It was for work. He said, I was gonna, I'm going to give you 75,000. I said, my heart just said, yes, take the 75,000. I said, that's okay. My guys were working at an office of another man. He's a billionaire. They were working there. When they were working there, they wanted a bag. And I've already sold this bag. I haven't received the man again. And then I called this man. I said, in your yard, there are many trucks there. Why can't you sell me one truck? That's what I told him. I sold my car for 70000 That I used to, to, to go for work. And then this man said, are you serious that you want to buy my truck? I said, yes, I want to buy my truck. He said, how are you going to pay? I said, you can tell me how you want me to pay. He said, are you able to raise cash? I want liquid cash. I don't want you to transfer money in my account. I said, yes. And then he said, do you know how many trucks are packed in my yard? I said, yes, I know. He said, there are three trucks there. Okay. How much do you want to pay me for one? And then I laughed. I said, I'll give you 80000 for one truck. And then he said, okay. Because I like you too much, can you add 20000 and then you take the whole three trucks? I could not believe it myself. I had to call my overseer, overseer was overseer at that time. I said, Baba, I don't know if this guy wants to torture me or not. <laughs> Three trucks for 100,000. I said, let me test it again. I said, I want the fourth one. <laughs> he said, how much do you want to give me? I said, I'll give you 30,000. So I got four trucks for 130,000. But where is it coming from? Three weeks ago, my elders were thinking that I'm crazy. They were saying, why do you take cars for work and just give? Why didn't that province provide the car? If I could have listened to them, I was not going to get this. You know, when I went to collect the car, the, the, the trucks, the papers were already on the table. He said, by tomorrow, I don't want to see these trucks in my yard. 
So I took those trucks for them. I used those trucks for almost three years. I was getting 4,000, 4,000 each for the truck for almost three years. And then a revelation came to me. I said, no, I want to upgrade. You heard me that I'm a director of a logistics company. I sold all the four trucks. They've already paid themselves by the work they were doing. 130,000 rand, 130,000 rand each. <laughs> each. And then I bought my first big truck. But where is it coming from? It is coming from sacrificing to God. You have been too stingy with your thousand rand. You have been too calculative so much. But it's not helping you anyway. You know, one day I was, we were in church like this. This message was preached about sacrificing to God by overseer, overseers and us. I was sitting there, I was a dick on that time. He, he was preaching that if you sacrifice to God, can, can God can do a miracle. When I was sitting there, I started calculating that I've seen this God, what it do. The anointing, the atmosphere been steered. It was on a Sunday. My wife was working in, in America that time. I'd already made arrangement that I was going to follow her to see her. Because I think it was almost three months without seeing one another. And then that money for the ticket, I took it and then I transferred it in the church account. I told my wife that I'm sorry, I'm no longer coming to America. I've given that money to God. My wife said, no, 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 don't worry about that one. I'm going to, I've left my credit card. You can use my credit card to buy the air ticket. I said, okay, let me do it. I tried to use that credit card. Things were not just waking up, adding up. And then I went to checkers. That's where I had success of buying that ticket with the credit card. But they told me that we are going to send you the ticket. And then I was supposed to leave on Tuesday. It was no, on a Sunday. No ticket came to me. And then I followed the South African Airways. I said, I paid. You deducted money from my wife's credit card. But I haven't received that ticket. That ticket was issued immediately. I took a flight. I went to America. I went to New York, to, to, to Washington. Whilst I was there, I took, the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways. Something came to me and said, check that account. That money was reversed 100% back in the account. Which means I went to America for free and came back for free again. So if we are talking of working for this God, he is a faithful God. I went and came back for free. For free. For free. Sacrificing to God. And now I want to challenge you here. You know, one day I was called by our overseer. Morocco. He said, son, I want you to come. I, I, I've got goods that I want to go to Zimbabwe. I said, no, that's okay. He said, but myself, I'm not available. I want you to go and, and, and the, the driver, truck driver said, it's going to come around 11. So go and be there with my goods at 11 o'clock. That day when he sent me there, tomorrow I had an exam and I hadn't prepared for that exam. So obediently, I went with my books to wait for the truck driver. I was there with other student pastors. 11 o'clock, the truck driver was not there. I think he came around 9 p.m. Tomorrow myself, I had an exam to write. And I had begged, that I had planned that I was going to read a day before the exam. So which means now I'm going to the exam room without any preparation. And I kind of predicted the questions that were going to come in the exam. You know, when I went to exam, those questions that I predicted, exactly they came. When I was there now, I was so much angry. I said, now I'm failing the exam because I sacrificed the whole time yesterday. The exam had five questions. 20 marks, 20 marks, 20 marks, 20 marks each. I only managed to answer three questions. The other two questions I did not answer. And then I left. The exam again that was coming on Friday, I answered 
four questions, which means they were supposed to mark my exam in out of 80. The other one, I did not answer because I did not prepare enough. My wife even rebuked me, said, you see now, we are going to fail because you spent the time saving the men of God. The time that you were supposed to be reading. And then I went to Zimbabwe to one of our churches. I was sitting in the, in the benches. One of the sisters came. She was testifying. She said, I went to write an exam, but the exam was so difficult. I did not finish. And then I commanded the, uh, the angel of word and faith, fear not, sin not, to go and finish my exam. <laughs> and then she said, people of God, you know what? It happened and I passed. I said, this testimony is mine. I went back to God. The God that I sacrificed my time to. I want you to go to revise my paper. Go and mark with him. I'm not going to fail. You know, I was just saying those words in fear. Because I knew that it was impossible. I've written out of 60. So to pass there, it was not, even if we're intelligent. We are coming back from Zimbabwe. Me and my wife, we're at the border. We just crossed. Network came. Email started coming now. The email for results came in. We're sitting together with my wife there at, at the South African side. And then I, I, I had to step aside. I wanted to delete the email very, very quickly. <laughs> but when I opened the email, I screamed at the border. People thought I'm crazy. The one that I've written out of 60, I had 100%. The one that I've re written out of 80, I had 97%. The other ones that I'd prepared much, I was around 70%. We are laughing, but I'm trying to say there is a God in heaven. When you sacrifice to him, life will change. So now I don't fail exam because some, a miracle had happened at before. Every time I write exam, I have to call that angel again. You, you need to work with me here. But I've got that grace because of the sacrifice that I do to God. I don't know. If, if you're getting something. You know, last week when you were at a deacon's prayer convention, I preached the same message when I went to their regions. And then when I was winding up, I said them, to them a simple thing. I said, the Holy Spirit is telling me that I want people who are going to buy the pastor some suits. Another guy just came. He was sitting in the benches. He came running to the pulpit. He said, the word is for me. That same day, he went and then he bought our pastor Manzini's suit. That guy, is, he just does, he does irrigation. Last week when we had Deacon's Prayer Convention, he came, I just ran to the, I, 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 I was parking in the church. He came and then he threw to me keys for cars, car keys for a Toyota Fortune. And then he said, Baba, that suit that I bought for my pastor, I sacrificed on that suit. Within two days, I managed to buy this car. I wanted to bless the car. So sacrifice it can change life. That gentleman now is different from all other deacons. He's the only one who's going to torture fortune at our church. Another day, I was called by our youth. They said, can you come? It was a sacrificial night. Can you come and motivate our youth to give to God? I preached this same message that I'm preaching today. And then I challenged our youth. I said, myself, I don't give. Because I've been giving too much in our church and I haven't been seeing so much results. I believe in sacrifice. I believe in going an extra mile. One of our youth there, she was listening to that message. And then she went home. And then she sacrificed the money that she had. That was on a Saturday night. On the Monday morning, the youth advisor called me. He said, Baba, that sister that sacrificed to God, 
His school fees for a master's degree, she was doing a master's in pharmacy. It has been paid, but she doesn't know who paid for that school fees. I also sacrificed that day. I had only 5,000 between me and Pova. That is in 2022. I took that 5,000 and then I gave. I said I was the speaker. I also need to lead by example. I gave that 5,000 rand. On Monday morning, another guy called Kuda. He called me. He said, Stan, we made a mistake in, in our organization. We want an evaluation to be done, but it must com be completed in the next three weeks. We are going to give you 500,000. I said, bring it. From 5,000, I ended up within 500,000 within two days. So if we are talking of sacrificing to God, he is a true and a faithful God. Life changes. Life changes. Life changes. Life changes. You're in the... When I listened to Elder Matangi preaching, I said, I want to follow this man. I want to be building churches. I want to look for those churches in the rural areas and, and assist them to build those churches. And everything was a sacrifice. I went back where I grew up and then we started a building a church. It's almost a thousand seater church. It's almost 85% complete now. We started building that church. We bought the instruments. We bought the chairs for the church. But nothing happened. You know, it, it, we're just doing. I'm a full-time elder in Kenya as well. We went to Kenya and then we started assisting to build a national center there. It was like God was just quiet. I approached our bishops in the church. I said, if you hear a church that is building, if you hear uh, those churches in the rural areas, if they're building churches, please let me know. I need to minister there. And then uh, Bishop Kapandura taught me of a church he was building. I started building with him. Bishop Panduke was building another church. I started building the church with him. It was, you know, when we were doing these things, it was like God is quiet. Nothing, we were not noticing anything. But during the pandemic, during the pan when the world was closed, I had a lot of contracts that I was doing. Immediately when, in February, when the government started closing, closing, closing departments, they all paid me at once. And because we are researchers for the government, we had to work with many departments to understand the pandemic COVID. When the world was closed, that is when I made money that I've never made in my life. I could hear the voice of God saying that, my son, those churches that you were assisting to build, I'm now rewarding you now. Right in the year of COVID, that right in 2021, I managed to buy almost five properties. Four of them we paid full cash. I could hear God saying, my son, all those sacrifices that we're doing, I'm now repaying now. My son, the firstborn is nine years old. I bought him a property. I bought his son. I don't know when he's going to have a son. But my grandson has got a property. My other son, who is turning five shortly, I brought him a, I bought him a property. I also bought his son. I don't know when that son is going to be born. I also bought that son a property again. Right in the time of COVID. I could hear God saying, my son, all those sacrifices that we're doing, I'm now repaying you now. So I'm saying to my brothers and sisters today, we are not saying these things to break to you. But we want you to also your life to change. I say that when I started ministering here, I told you about my history. That 10 years ago, I was staying under the bridges. 10 years ago, I was popping lice in there. Hallelujah. 10 years ago, my skin was black. When people used to see me, they used to think that I'm a drug, drugster. 
10 years ago, I could go two weeks without passing because the situation was so negative in my life. 10 years ago, food was like a gold or diamond to me. 10 years ago, I used to go and beg for food in the streets. I used to go to restaurants to ask for food left over so that we have something to eat. Ten years ago, I used to walk kilometers and kilometers looking for work, restaurant after restaurant, when things were not making sense. But the difference is that I managed to utilize the small opportunity that I got. And he said that I don't want my life to remain like this. You know, my bosses, the one who fired me from being a waiter, I eat at this restaurant where he's still a manager today. No, no. The other boss of mine has been asking me to employ him. He wants to come to work with me. But unfortunately, I don't have space for him. The other people that used to be my leaders, I don't want to mention by names. We are still be, we are, we are, we are elders together. Some of them are still deacons, but they were my seniors at work in the restaurants. We're working in the same restaurant, same restaurant, same restaurant, same restaurant, same restaurant. But what made a difference is a sacrifice to God. In closing, I want people of God who are listening to me today that when you're going home, you need to make up your mind. At first for just looking in the house where you're staying. Look at that house where you're staying there. The one that you're renting, that doesn't belong to you. Look in your bank account. It has been playing around 10,000 or minus for too long. Look where you're coming from back there in Zimbabwe or wherever. And it say, does this the life that you want your parents to live? Is this the life when you die today or your mother dies today? Are you going to feel proud to go with us where you're coming from? Look at your pillow right now. Are you proud with your pillow? The one that you were sleeping on last night. Look the cup that you are saving in your house. That plate that you are saving in your house. Let's go and look and examine your wardrobe. Are you proud of what is in your wardrobe? You know, right now, as I'm preaching right now, there might be one or two who are having a prop challenge. How am I going to go back to home? If you are facing those challenges, we want people who rebel against their challenges. Who say that enough is enough. I've been suffering for too long. You can't continue sending applications and then they get rejected and rejected and rejected every time. We are saying one people who get angry with their situations. Myself, it started from being angry with my situation. I said to myself, no more poverty in my life. My children, no more poverty to my children. And I've addressed it. But I want you to look at your children. Right now, you are thinking twice of school fees. Things are not adding up. We want people who surrender to God. You know, when they surrendered that bread to Jesus, it multiplied. When that widow surrendered, when she surrendered to the men of God, it's multiplied. When the fish was not eating up, when they surrendered to Jesus, it was enough for feeding 7,000 people. We have been taught into your things for too long. Some of you are even fighting with your suits. Was he, the suit is telling you that, he, 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 please, I, I can't fit you. But you are, you are trying. 
you need to sacrifice, give it to someone. Here in the church here, you know, if I look around here, there are many things that one can just say, I don't want to see this puppet next week. It must change. God is going to change your life. You know, in my province, right now we are changing the whole chairs. And I'm very stingy with that project. No one knows what's happening. I just, they just see chairs coming, 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 coming. We're almost 75% to, to put chairs in our, in, our, in our church. The region that doesn't have instruments, I buy myself. I don't even need an authority for the, anyone. I just go to check them and then I buy them. Because I've seen what God can do. I go to my overseer's house to minister there. But you know, your, th your things are not working. There's going to be no way you overseer's there. You don't even know where, where they stay. But you are just complaining things are not adding up. Things are not adding up. Things are not adding up. But this afternoon, we just want to stand up. The message that I preached is not about laying of hands. Yes, we are going to lay hands on people, but it's for action. It's for action. It's for action, it's for action, it's for action. You know, there's a time when Isaac, he was very rich, if you read the word of God. Very, very rich. But because he knew the principle that I am rich, but my children are not rich, they need to sacrifice for them to be blessed. Isaac, you are supposed just to take maybe thousand gods give to uh, uh, Esau, Another thousand sheep give to Jacob. But he said, I want you to go and hunt something. You must sacrifice something in the forest. You bring it and then I'll bless you. You know, another day, when Overseer Mopongo was, was, was our pastor, there was a problem. When we, we used to do deeper life at Beola Park, and then now we're changing to go to Oliphant's Fontaine. I just overheard. I was a dick on that time. That people of the church, elders, they're putting big cots there to clear that land. You know that land, Baba? Where we, did, where we put pitch the church. It was forest there. I went to, to our leaders in our church. I said, I heard that they're putting exorbitant cost. I'm going to come with my team. We are going to clear this land. We went with my team and then we cleared the land where we used to do deeper life and where we did deeper life this year. We cleared that one. I was elders also fought with me. Said, why, 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 "Who do you think you are? You, we are putting quotes. You go there and minister there." Later, did I know? One day, I was sit. I was when Dibale started. I heard Baba asking, looking for me. Baba, good, looking for me, Baba. And then I, uh, uh, Pastor Dubi called me. Said, "Baba is looking for you." Baba, good, looking for me. What have I done? But unfortunately, because I was not attending Deepal at that time, I was going to school. Baba Guti had to take a phone to call my wife. What kind of grace is that one? But where is it coming from? It's coming from a sacrifice. He said, I want your husband to come to my house. That night, I went to Baba Guti's house. When we went there, he said, my son, I want to bless you. And then he blessed, he spoke words of blessing. He said, we can, church cannot give you money enough. But the words that I'm going to give you, they are going to be words that are going to bless you. And then he spoke words in my life. He prophesied in my life, in my company. You know, that time I was a no, but nothing. And then he told me that you need to go and look for a white man to be a manager of your company. I said, but what Baba is talking about now? White man to be a manager of my company. What is that? But you know, things just started forcing me to look for a white man. Right now my company... Is managed by two white men. One is a PhD, he's a doctor. The other one has got two masters. But it's coming from sacrifice. Amen. Hallelujah. Words were spoken upon my life. Right now, my life has changed. We want to do something. I was not sent to do this. I was not sent to do this. We did not plan to do this. I want to say, just, just bring buckets here. Buckets, two buckets. 
if you hear your heart is saying, no, don't do it. But one people who are sacri- want to sacrifice. I haven't, I've been preaching this message for too long. And every time we preach it, life changes. There are people who got jobs. Last week I was praying with another deacon who did not have a job. Within two months after sacrificing to God, she bought a brand new car that we were praying last week and she got a job. We want people who are going to sacrifice to God here. The man of God is here. We want him to bless us. What we are doing is scriptural. Because Isaac said that my children, I could give you things. But you must do something for me to bless you. You must do something for you to bless you. If you pray for you, it's going to work. But we want people who are going to sacrifice to God. If you hear that you want to sacrifice something... But you don't have now. I don't have their sacrifice. You can come and write what you want to sacrifice to God. If you hear that, you want to do something for God. But we want to bless the men and women of God so that they will speak a blessing in our lives today. Only if you are tired with your situation. Only if you are tired with your situation. You know, I was preaching last week to our church. I said, this demon of poverty, it's so stubborn. Because if you check in the Bible, when Jesus came, the first statement that he made, he said that I've come to preach good news to the poor. When he was coming from the mountain, he had to be spiritual also to fight against this one. We want to come. We want to come. We want to come. We want to come. 